This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for another session of Condo Insider. My name is uh, Jane Sugimura, and I am your host today. And today, uh, and, and this is a show for people who live in condos and work in condos or have anything to do with condos. And today we're going to be uh, talking about some new legislation that became effective two weeks ago. And I have as my guest, uh, my very good friend, Richard Port, who, you, has been, who has been uh, a longtime advocate for uh, condo owners. And he's uh, had over 20 years of experience of uh, being a board member uh, in a high-rise uh, condominium and as an advocate he's been uh, beating the, and knocking on doors at the legislature for over 20 years, haven't we? I think I started actually back in the 1980s, so that's what, going into the fourth decade almost, I guess. Oh my God, that's so really long amazing. Time. And you know, when I first got started, first of all, I thank you for the invitation. But when I first got involved, it was primarily um, to try to provide information for owners uh, as to um, uh, what their boards were doing and making sure that they had the information uh, that they needed to determine whether boards were doing a good job. And uh, we did a lot of uh, good legislation over the years to, you know, provide them with minutes and financial statements, even a contract, signed contracts, uh, so things like that, so that they would be able to be prepared. We even got them a permission to get owner's lists so that they could write to owners if they had a pro saw that the board had a problem. But more recently, we're looking at the board interactions among themselves, and so that brings us uh, up to this kind of legislation. Right, and what we're going to be talking about is Act 196, and that was House Bill uh, 1874 that passed out of the legislature uh, in the uh, 2018 session, but it became effective on January 2nd, 2019, which was only two weeks ago. And so, um, <coughs> and this legislation deals with mediation and arbitration, and we already have those provisions in the condo right. statute. Right. And and you had a personal stake in the outcome of this legislation. Why were you so involved in this? Well, a little bit more background. Uh, initially, we wanted to make sure that owners, if they did have a gripe or a problem, that they could get mediation instead of having to go take things to court because court is expensive. So we wanted to be able to uh, allow owners to mediate disputes and. Initially, we thought, well, that's, that's a really a good way to go because uh, uh, boards would certainly not want to spend a lot of money in court. And so uh, we had the mediation statute and then uh, subsequently mediation or arbitration. And that seemed to work up to a point. But uh, gradually what we found was that uh, boards sometimes found it more advantageous uh, to uh, s string out the mediation or the arbitration, and that did not work too well for the individual owners uh, who had problems. So more recently, we've had cases where there might be, let's say, a minority member or members of a board. So you might have a nine-member board, it might be two or three members that are on the minority, and that they somehow feel the board is not doing what it's supposed to do. Now, generally speaking, you know, majorities rule, and you expect that uh, the decisions of the majority will be uh, the effective for the entire condominium. But on occasion, you get a dispute where maybe there's actually a good issue. Maybe there's something that they feel, I'm not saying always, but that they feel is actually being done that might be illegal. And so, uh, the problem became that the earlier statute only was only clear as it related to uh, owners and board owners and, and boards, board. uh, and uh, and I think the thinking early on was, well, uh, board members are owners and therefore they should be able to mediate, and uh, 
but uh, it was the stringing out that became a real problem. And you know, with with boards, I mean, they even though you know there's you know, and and I guess you know the dynamics is that most boards are pretty congenial and they can work things out. But you know, you're entitled to disagree. Right. You can. I mean, in fact, you're in you, fact you have an obligation to disagree if you feel strongly right. uh, that you know the facts that are presented to you as a board member. Uh, you know, don't support the decision of the majority. And so even if <clears throat> you disagree and you go on record as, uh, you know, uh, uh, the minority position, I mean, that's something that you can do and you're allowed to do. Right. And, and in fact, usually uh, a board member will be satisfied by simply voting no on a particular issue. But, and that, and so that most of the time, everything works out. Um, but as I've said to many a, a board uh, a member, you know, on occasion, there's something that not only uh, you don't like, but may in fact be against the bylaws or the declaration or whatever. And, uh, and that dispute needs to be resolved if it's serious. And in fact, you did have a, a dispute with your board and uh, you made a demand for mediation and, 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 and in fact, that's what they, they, they did. They basically said, well, you, you know, statute doesn't apply to you. Yeah. Because you, in, in fact, they said, fine, just vote no, but don't tell the owners about uh, the problem. And uh, so it actually became a, a kind of internal dispute, not only <laughs> between the board, but between owners and the board. And in this case, uh, uh, Act 196, there's a section on mediation, there's a section on arbitration. The part that deals with mediation, it expanded the people who could participate in mediation. And, and how, how, did, how did that affect you? Well, the, the, the good news, uh, the, first of all, let's take the bad news. The bad news was <coughs> that stringing something out, but not only just for me, but for any uh, owner or board member, um, is, is costly. And also, it doesn't resolve anything. The, in fact, the, it's like, uh, you know, a scab that keeps getting worse and worse. And um, so uh, this new bill will be very helpful because it, in, in, and you can explain it to, to better than I can actually, but basically uh, we won't have to uh, wait and let the, the board keep stringing out mediation or arbitration uh, because it's then going to be assumed that the answer is they don't want to mediate or arbitrate if it gets strung out. Right, and you know, and the, the, the thing of it is you keep saying stringing out. So it's like, well, you make a demand, and, and by stringing out, you're saying, well, what happens is, the, in, in, case you're, in, in your case, I think the demand was for evaluative mediation. Right. right. And there's two kinds of mediation. Well, let's tell our listeners, you know, what, they, what yes. it is. There's facilitative mediation and there's evaluative mediation. Right. And facilitative mediation basically means that you have a trained neutral, a mediator, who tries to you know, persuade the parties to come together and, and resolve their differences, their, their, their dispute. Whereas uh, a uh, an evaluative mediation, you have a neutral who is trained in mm -hmm. condo law mm -hmm. and basically tells people, hey, you got a bad case or you have a good case. And, right. you know, and, and, and also gives you a, 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 a written opinion, you know, as right. to the, the, the strengths and weaknesses of your position. And so that means that if you go through evaluative mediation and you don't get it resolved, you have a piece of paper that tells you whether you've got a good case or a bad case. And if you do go on to litigation, I mean, and it, with a bad case, you could get hit with a lot of attorney's fees sure. if you lose. Right. And, 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 and so that's, the, that's part of the, the, the wonderful part of it is that, that uh, an, an owner or a board member who's disputing and finds out that this uh, independent evaluator is um, saying you don't have a good case, you better drop the case. Right. And, and, and in some cases, the, uh, the independent mediator is a retired judge. Yeah. In, and that's good. And that's that's good. And and another good thing about evaluative mediation, which is the reason you use it, is it's subsidized by the state of Hawaii. Right. Right. In other words, you're not paying for the mediator, and for the retired judges, their hourly rate is four hundred dollars an hour. And so, if you take evaluative mediation, 
then that means that you're not paying, you, you're only paying for the first hour. Right. And the state of Hawaii picks up the balance of and the we, cost. And we ought to explain to the viewers that uh, uh, that money that's used for this purpose uh, is money that owners pay into a fund uh, that the Commerce and Consumer Protection, uh, uh, the Real Estate Commission, basically handles that those funds. And, it, and it's been going on for 20 years. And when it first started, you and I opposed it because we said, hey, this is just another tax yeah. on condominiums. And when it started over 20 years ago, it was a dollar and a quarter right. every other year. <coughs> and, and I think you know, now, isn't it, th is it three? No. As of 2017, it was $10 per unit. $10 per so, unit. So, you do the math. There's millions of dollars that the state of Hawaii is collecting. So, you know, and, and one of the purposes for the other condo ed fund is to provide uh, uh, programs that, uh, that will uh, facilitate the resolution of dispute between p parties in a condominium. Yes. And, uh, and, and so, so, so by doing this, uh, you know, by having the, these funds available, that means people can do evaluative mediation either with, uh, with, with different organizations that contract with the Real Estate Commission, and one of them is the Mediation Center of the Pacific, right. and the other one is Dispute Resolution, uh, Dispute Prevention Resolution that has the retired judges, and there are a number of private mediator slash attorneys right. who have been trained right. and have the, the, uh, the expertise in condo law who will do the uh, evaluative mediation. And, and really, you went through the process, so it's really easy, right? You pick up the phone, and we, we call DPR, and, and they handle it. Right. You, you tell them who the association is on the other side, and they start trying to schedule it, and that's where, they, where, where you that's got... That's where we got into a problem. Right, because they, your, your board came back and said, oh, no, uh, we don't want to do evaluative mediation. We want to do facilitative mediation. And they got away with that. Right. And, and so we were at a stalemate. That's right. And how long did the stalemate last? Well, I think we started actually in May of 2016, and it didn't get, uh, uh, in didn't get settled until, was it December of 17? Uh, huh? so it, it, it was over a year. Yeah. Oh, well over a year. Uh, over a year. Yeah. And... And, and, and the funny thing about it is, in, in, and, 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 the, and this statute, right, this statute also has a provision. Act 196 has a provision that says, if you ask for mediation and the other side doesn't respond, and the statute says, the current statute says, thou shalt mediate. Right. Shall. Right. Shall means mandatory. Doesn't mean six months from now. Doesn't mean a year from now. Right. It means you will do it now. Yeah. Right? By the way, I had the wrong year. I think it was 2015 we started, and we didn't get resolved until late 2017. Yeah, so it was, it was almost long two years. Long time. Long time. And, and so if this law had been in effect, you could have filed the motion to compel and right. gotten your attorney's fees. And, but anyway, right now, uh, it's time to take a break. So we're going to take a break for uh, a minute, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to tell, tell the audience how you finally got to mediation. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. All right. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? Yes, you do. Each year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall, and many will be serious. The majority of falls happen at home, so remove things that could make you trip and install handrails to keep you steady. To learn more about the steps you can take to help prevent a fall, please talk to your doctor. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or medicaremadeclear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Future that we can resolve. Okay. Okay, we're back with uh, my guest, uh, Richard Port, who is a condo advocate. 
Thank you, Richard, for being on our program. And I've asked him to share his experience, uh, which had to do, uh, and, and his experience with his board, where he had a dispute and he demanded mediation under the statute. And what his board did was, you know, string him along and stonewall him. And so now we have a statute that went into effect two weeks ago. And I guess we have your condominium to thank for some of the provisions in that, in, in that uh, uh, law, because now the things that, uh, that, um, uh, that are in the law are going to help other people right. whose boards will, 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 will not ref, uh, mediate with them. Right. Now they can um, demand mediation, go to court, and get their attorney's fees yeah. and their court costs uh, reimbursed. And it, it, it's a maximum of $1,500, which should be sufficient for them to file the one petition, one court hearing, and have it all resolved. And so, wh what happened exactly? How how did how did your case get to mediation? Well, j let me first just get a reminder of where we've come during this yeah. whole 30, 40 years. Early on, uh, people would say, "Oh, but that's just your condominium or that condominium," because I would get calls from other condominiums, and they would say, "Oh, but that's only one condominium that has a problem." But sooner or later, you begin to find that. Uh, of what impacts one does, in fact, eventually impact other condominiums. But anyway, back to our legislation. Uh, it took us uh, all the time that I mentioned just before the break to uh, be even able to sit down with a mediator. And you've already pointed out it was not it was facilitative, not evaluative. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, basically. There was a settlement, but it really was, um, it, it was the best we were going to be able to do under that particular situation. In the future, any of these kind of disputes will be able to go through an evaluative uh, mediation in which each side will get uh, a paper. It may not be long, but it'll be telling you what the strengths and weaknesses of your case. And I, I think that's... Uh, uh, very important. But in your case, in your case, what happened is the association filed a petition. That's true. Against you. That's right. And they basically asked the circuit court to make a determination that your claim was not suitable. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, 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 and what happened in that case was the judge took a look at that petition, took us back in the back room, and basically scolded, scolded, scolded us. Like, why are you wasting my time? And, and, and then he ordered us into mediation. Yes. He ordered us, he ordered us to go into yeah. mediation, and, and that's how we got there. Yeah. I mean, that's the long way around, but, you know, we, we finally got into mediation, and it was because, you know, the judge, you know, basically said, you know, why are you guys wasting my time? The statute says, thou shalt mediate. So here it is, and he, he read the paperwork, and he says, how come you've been fighting for over almost two years and you filed this petition, which is a waste of my time to read? Yeah. And as a matter of fact, the courts really do not like condo cases. No, they hate they, them. They would prefer, much prefer, that these go and be settled in mediation or, if necessary, in arbitration. Right. And, the, I, you know, when we first set it up, too, we, when we first set up the statute, we set up the statute so that... If you don't follow the steps, in other words, you go and you demand mediation, and if you don't get mediation, then you can do arbitration. Right. And if you don't follow the steps and you go right into litigation, then the judge can say, hey, I'm not going to award you your attorney's fees. Yeah. Right? Because you didn't follow the process. Right. And the process is set up so that you don't have lawsuits. You don't have these condo lawsuits. Right. Because the judges just hate them. And we've had a few over the years, over the decades, that really ended up being very expensive for the association and for the owner. And, and frankly, uh, if it weren't for the fact that some of these owners who have gone all the way through the process had deep pockets, they had lots of money, uh, they, uh, you know, and ultimately some of these go into hundreds of thousands of dollars, which is ridiculous. And, and, and basically, and when, when there's a lawsuit, the, the association turns it over to its carrier, right? And, that, and then the carrier has to defend, 
whether the association is right or wrong, they have to defend. And in some cases, in fact, it seems like in most cases, they end up paying the, these humongous judgments. Right. And, and then it affects the future uh, charges for insurance right. as well. Right. For, for the association. And now it seems like it's affecting everybody in the state right. because of the lawsuits. And I was at a, at a, at a, at a, um, uh, a seminar where Sue Savio, you know, who is yes. head of insurance associates, right. she told us that Hawaii has the most claims of any little Hawaii yeah. as, as, you know, versus right. all of the 50 states right. in the whole United States. Right. We have the most claims yeah. against DNO po uh, po policies and that the carriers are leaving the state. So we're now down to two or three. Yeah. And so the risk pool that your your condominium my, we're all in the same risk pool right. so if there's this so if the people read about a lawsuit where a, a condominium gets sued and they and the owners win a judgment of three million dollars guess who pays for that yeah. i'm beginning to see that attorneys who previously would have uh, who represent the board uh, associations and boards uh that formerly uh, they would they would carry these situations and go through the legal process, but now it seems like they're trying to avoid some of these uh, lawsuits, and and that's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing because <clears throat> these the mediation and now and and part of this uh, Act One Ninety Six, if you can't resolve your dispute in evaluative mediation, right now this bill says you can do voluntary binding arbitration. How is that different from the arbitration that we have now? Well, by by having binding arbitration, it it will mean that there will be a re resolution uh, to to the issue. Because mm -hmm. right now, the, the way the statute is written, the under the arbitration statute, it's non-binding. Yeah. yeah, it's non-binding, and if you if you win then the losing party can't appeal, yeah. and then you start all over again yeah. because there's something called a de novo review. Yeah, you might want to mention what that is. Uh, de novo re review means that you went through the, you go through the arbitration process, which is like a mini trial because the arbitrator basically has this hearing and he listens to witnesses and looks at, 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 at evidence and, and makes a decision. And, and, and the person, the losing party has a right to appeal it. And if they appeal it, a de novo review means that when it goes up on appeal, they start from scratch. You start all over again. The decision gets thrown out, and the circuit court basically has to go through the, you repeat the process. Right. And that's why a lot of people don't go through the, uh, the old arbitration, uh, the, 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 the existing arbitration that's in the statute. But now, with Act 196, you have you can the parties can agree to enter into binding arbitration and i'm told that some of the carriers aren't happy about this you know because you know because they might have to insure you know but you know to me that's a different issue the good thing about this type of uh, non-binding ar uh, arbitration is that it's subsidized by the conduit fund right and uh, owners should feel uh, ready to contact uh, the, condom the condominium specialist, and for that matter, the best person to contact is Jane Sugimura uh, to, to at least get a reading, a general reading of whether there's a, there's a problem or not a problem. Right, and you know, they can call the condo specialist, and, and, or they could go on the website. The Real Estate Commission has got a terrific website, and all they have to do is put Hawaii Real Estate Commission in the Google search, mm -hmm. right? That will take them directly to the Hawaii, the, the DCCA Real Estate Commission. They have a terrific website, and they have a whole page on, I mean, a whole section on dispute resolution, and, and they will tell you how to do the evaluative mediation, and this is an evaluative mediation, and now we've got non-binding arbitration. Both of these programs are subsidized by the condo ed fund that everybody pays into anyway. I mean, every, they're paying into it whether or not you have a claim. And I hope that owners know that uh, you are the president of uh, the Hawaii Condominium Co-op Association. Right. And uh, 
that, uh, you know, I'm sure, I mean, you don't want 100 people calling you, but if there's a real issue, they can contact you and, um, and see if you can help them. Right, and you know, and, and, and mediating a dispute is a quick, it's quick, it's cheap. Now it's cheap because now, now it's subsidized by the condo ed fund, right? The, the mediators are, are, are subsidized. Uh, and and you know um, and and it doesn't take long. It just means you know you, you pick up the phone and you call the Mediation Center of the Pacific or DPR or one of the the professionals who do this. I mean, and they have websites all over the place. And if you go to the the Real Estate Commission website, they have a list of people who do this. Yeah. Or they can call the condo specialist at the DCCA and find out from them. And you know, all this stuff is free. Yeah. free information it's not like you have to hire an attorney to get this information and so that's what and, and you know somebody told me and i don't know whether it was you in, in a recent email that there were only 20 oh no it was it was the senator who told me that there were only 28 cases last year that went through the evaluative med mediation program and i don't know whether that means we're not, there's not as many disputes and maybe people, and that, that's a good thing if there's not a whole lot. 28 of is a, a good number, actually. But, but you know, the, the fact that we still have lawsuits means that, you know, there are disputes out there and we got to get the message out that they need to go through, they have to look at mediation and, non -bind, and, and binding arbitration as an alternative to suing. It's cheaper, it's faster. And you know, um, and it doesn't, and it won't affect your association's insurance right. premium. One of the other issues we should look at in the future is, let's suppose again we're talking about a board. You're a board member, and the majority uh, is not listening to you, uh, and uh, has decided that you are uh, you should be excluded from committee meetings or other kinds of meetings where association matters are being discussed. That's an issue we ought to look at in the future because uh, that's not fair and it's not right. If association monies are involved, any board member ought to be able to attend such a meeting. Yes, that's true. And so that, that, that is something we, we can look at in the future. And, you know, uh, uh, one other thing that we want to impress on our listeners and our viewers is that any citizen can make change, just like you, right? Yes, you, you, absolutely. You, you learned who your, your legislators were, and you went down to the I legislature, did. made friends with them, and, and you've been able to change the law. Right. And, and so if, if Richard can do it and I can do it, anybody can do it. Yeah. And, and, and these are your elected officials, and so, you know, this is something you might want to consider. Go on to the uh, State of Hawaii legislature website, find out who your legislators are, and become their really good friends. And that way, whenever you have a problem, maybe not relating to condos, but you know, any problem where a, a state uh, agency or department is involved, you call your legislator and you grumble to them and let them uh, try to help you. And we run out of time. And uh, so uh, I thank you very much for being with us I'm today. I'm happy to have been here. And, and, and join us next week for another episode of Condo Insider on Thursday at 3 o'clock. Uh, and, and thank you for joining us today. Aloha.